Amen. Ain't God good? Woo, thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Here it is, another night to worship and praise and lift him up. Amen. This is, you know what, this is an honor. Amen. To do this. Amen. Praise God. Glad to see all the smiling faces. Yeah. And Barbara's just smiling from ear to ear. Amen. Praise the Lord. You know, we all ought to be smiling. Me, me and Richard was talking about how we've already read the end of the book. Let me tell you, if you haven't, you, you'd be, if you'd read it, you'd be smiling too. Amen? Because we win. Amen? Now, that ain't to say there ain't going to be a bump in the road here and there. But the good news is that them bump in the roads don't matter. It's the ending of anything that matters. Amen? Amen. The Bible says the ending of anything is better than the beginning. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Woo! It's good to have Brother Harvey back. Amen. 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 Yeah. That's me. That's yeah. Oh, yeah, me. <laughs> I thought my name was Willie Nelson. Willie Nelson. It's good to have Willie in the house. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Glory. Oh, man, I love the Lord. I do. You know, and there's such a joy. And the Bible says that the joy of the Lord is our strength. So we can joy in having him. Look over here. We've got Sister Shirley back in the house. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory. Yeah. We, yes, we have. Amen. We miss John, too. Amen. Sure do. And, but you know what? He'll be back. He'll be back. Remember that uh, this Friday is our singing. It's an open mic. Bring somebody. Let's fill God's house. And uh, sing unto the glory of God. Amen? Amen? Lift him up. So that's this Friday. This Sunday, we'll start revival. And we're going to go all week. Amen? So be prepared. Listen, let me, let me say something real quick about revival. Revival starts with each and every one of us. The, the, the evangelist or the speaker, all they are is the spark. You're what it ignites. Amen? Amen. I thought about this. I thought about revival and how, how that little spark. You remember, I don't know if any of you remember about, what was it? Zuzu, Zulu Street? Zuzu Street? Is Zuzu. Is Zuzu Street? How that just started with a little, and look where it went. Amen? It could start right here, right now, right here in Sand Spring, and ignite. Amen? I thought about that grass fire or that forest fire in California here a couple of years back. They said that it started because somebody flipped a cigarette butt out the, out the window, and it burned down acres and acres of the mighty oaks. The big trees were on fire and burnt down from a little spark, from a cigarette butt. And listen, that's the way with our faith. Just a little bit of ignition can ignite our faith and get us started to, oh, on a much better path to God. You know, lifting our spirits up, letting us know that, hey, uh, there's no, no room for depression because, hey, we've got God. And he's on our side. Amen. If God be for you, who can be against you? Why would you be depressed? No matter what comes, God's going to see you through. It might be a little bit of a rough spell, but you know what? That, that rough spell just increases your strength, your faith in Him. You know, uh, the resistance is what makes us stronger. Yes. And, and it that's, works the same with our faith, not just with our physical muscles, Amen. but with our faith. Yes. So, Listen, look up for redemption draw up nigh. Amen? So this, this revival, they're not going to they're, they're not going to put the fire in you. They're going to provide the spark. Amen. The fire will be from you. Amen? Yes. Just open up. Open up. Yes. I love that, 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 that yes. parable in, in the Bible where Jesus said, I'm standing at the door and I'm knocking. I'm knocking. And he said, if you'll open, I'll come in. Listen, that's revival. If you'll open and allow him in, yes. you'll find more peace, more joy than you've ever known. I guarantee it. Try it. You might like it. 
Amen. Amen. It might become a habit with you. Amen. It is with me. Yeah, a lot of churches don't like me. I'm getting, I get excited. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Listen, go to one of these black churches sometime. I'm telling you, I've been there. They love, They invited me back. Yeah. I, I'll tell you a funny story. Was, I was there. Mike Perky was preaching. You know who Mike Perky is? And we was getting excited out there. They two, two big black ladies. And they was getting really, I mean, and you know me. They're going to dance. I'm going to dance. And I got kind of between them. And this black guy said, whoo, that's the funniest thing i ever seen. And I said, what do you mean? He said, you guys look like an Oreo cookie. Chocolate on the outside and vanilla on the end. Do you know what? We had the spirit and we had the time of our lives. Amen? Whew. Glory to God. And you know, that's the freedom of God. He said, where he is, there's liberty. Liberty. So let's, let's allow him in. Amen? Let's don't shut the door on him. Let's, let's say, hey, you know what? Come on in. Take over. Just give me that joy that goes beyond understanding. You know, and, and hurtful, you can still have a joy. Yes. People look at you like you're crazy, like what's wrong with you? And you can say, hey, I've had a change. You know, I, I've, I've allowed Jesus in. Amen. You know, I said, you've lost your mind. You say, yeah, I lost my mind and I took on the mind of Christ. Amen? Woo, that mind that says there's no defeat, that there's always victory, there's always joy, there's always peace, there's always... God, listen to me tonight. God wants to... He wants to help you through these... We've got trouble all around us. But you know what? We're not in distress because we know who we serve. Amen? Oh, I'm looking forward getting it started. Amen. Woo! Debbie rub your hands together and just, they all of a sudden they start getting warm. Wow! You know what? That's the way it's going to be. Amen? And let's don't let it die out there. Let's keep that going. Amen? We get the fire going. Let's don't let it go down. Let's keep stoking that fire. Amen? <coughs> Praise the Lord. But it, like I say, it's good having Brother Harvey in here and Sister Shirley's here. Amen? Yeah, ain't it awesome? Yeah. You want to sing a song, sis? Washed in the blood. Okay. Go for it. Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you fully trusting in His grace this hour? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood, in the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you walking daily by the Savior's side? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Do you rest each moment in the crucified? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood, in the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? When the bridegroom cometh, will your robes be white, pure and white in the blood of the Lamb? Will
will you soul be ready for the mansion pride and be washed in the blood of the land are you washed in the blood in the soul cleansing blood of the lamb are your garments spotless are they white as snow are you washed in the blood of the lamb lay aside the garments that are stained with sin and be washed in the blood of the lamb there's a fountain flowing for the soul unclean oh be washed in the blood of the lamb are you washed in the blood in the soul cleansing blood of the lamb are your garments spotless are they white as snow are you washed in the blood of the lamb glory Brother Harvey, we've waited long enough. You're going to have to sing for us. Sing. Amen. You've been missing for yeah. a month. I haven't touched this guitar in a, yeah, over probably about six weeks, I think. Something like that. Just want to build on something Pastor Sonny said. In your darkest night, in your deepest pain, when there doesn't seem to be much else around, there is a joy that comes from Jesus. Amen. As you're waiting for surgery, all alone with a dry mouth that's almost like a sore throat, with the anxiety that comes with all that, there is joy in Jesus. Amen. 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 And you can count on that. And I began to worship him and praise him and sing some songs all by myself in a lonely room in a hospital. I don't even hardly remember getting there too. And the Lord touched me. And I got excited. And I was afraid the nurses were going to come rushing down and find out what was wrong with me. And after a while, I thought about, maybe that's a good thing, you know. And I got to share Jesus' joy with some people. They'd go in the room and say, you're about to have surgery and, uh, you know, good luck. And I'd say, I don't need good luck. I got a good Jesus. Amen. And the Lord would open my mouth and some people would be there. And before you know it, we were praying for them. And touching them. And I got to pray with a doctor and a couple nurses. And when we, I know the Spirit of the Lord was there. And touched some people. And in so doing, the Lord touched me. Put your life in Jesus' nails, God hand. Put your life. In Jesus' nails, God hands. He's the rock of ages. He's the sages, sages. He's the key to the promised land. Put your life in Jesus' nails, God hands. I said, put your life. In Jesus' nails, God hand. Why don't you put your life in Jesus' nails, God hand? He's the rock of ages, he's the sages, sages, he's the key to the promised land. Put your life. In Jesus' nails, God hand. Well, I was bound, but Jesus set me free. Yes, I was blind, 
but Jesus help me see. I was lost and alone, so far from home, I was losing sight of me. But he came and set my spirit free. I put my life in Jesus nails God hands why don't you I put my life in Jesus nails God hands he brought me through I was lost and alone so far from home I was losing sight of me but he came and he set my spirit free so put your life in jesus nails god hands you only got one put your life in jesus nails god hands you'll never regret it he's the rock of ages he's the sages sages he's the key to the promised land put your life in jesus nails god hands i put it in his hands Shirley. You sing, I'll try to play. <laughs> well, I tell you what, <clears throat> it's really hard trying to maintain two houses. That's all I can say. <sighs> Helen, you want to join me? <clears throat> Avon? You want to join me? Well, thank you. That's a good song. Larry Norman wrote that one years Sonny, ago. Sonny, do you have a special? That's a good one. Yeah, it is. I shall not be moved. Does that sound good? Well, not moved. Yeah, amen. Page 339. Yeah, I think so. I worked in the yard all morning, so my voice is kind of like not what it's supposed to be, but God will turn it into what it's supposed to be. Page 339. Ready? Glory, hallelujah, I shall not be moved. Anchored in Jehovah, I shall not be moved just like a tree. That's planted by the waters. I shall not be moved. I shall not be, I shall not be moved. I shall not be, I shall not be moved. Just like a tree that's planted by the waters. I shall not be moved. In his love abiding, I shall not be moved. And in him confiding, I shall not be moved. Just like a tree that's planted by the water. I shall not be moved. I shall not be, I shall not be moved. I shall not be, I shall not be moved. Just like a tree that's planted by the waters. I shall not be moved. Though all hell assail me, I shall not be moved. Jesus 
Jesus will not fail me. I shall not be moved just like a tree that's planted by the water. I shall not be moved. I shall not be, I shall not be moved. I shall not be, I shall not be moved. Just like a tree that's planted by the water. Rages, I shall not be moved. On the rock of ages, I shall not be moved. Just like a tree that's planted on the waters, I shall not be moved. I shall not be. I shall not be moved. I. That's one of the things that mine and John's son said the morning that he died. We prayed for him that evening. He said, today's the day, Dad. And we didn't know what he was talking about. And later on in the afternoon, we knew. Because when we got through praying that time, he asked his daddy, who's that man over there? There was nobody there, only one man, and that was John. But we know God had sent Amen. an angel to give. That's right. That in itself gives me comfort. Amen. But we still need prayer in our family. It's still hard to get up in the morning and know that you're not going to get that phone call. And at night, when he'd come home from work, he, my son would call me and he'd say, Just want you to know, Mom, I'm home and I'm fine. You know, when you hear from them twice a day, every day, all their life, and then all of a sudden those phone calls don't come. But there's comfort in knowing that they're in a far better place than we are today because the world is just waxing worse and worse. And when Brother Sonny mentioned the revival, John's eyes just got about that big, and he said, I can hardly wait. I'm praying that God will make a way that he can be here. I pray. 279, and I want to see him too. As I journey through this land, singing as I go, pointing souls to Calvary, to that crimson flow. Many arrows pierce my soul from without within, but my Lord leads me on, through him I must win. Oh, I want to see him look upon his face. There to sing forever of His saving grace On the streets of glory, let me lift my voice Cares all past, home at last, ever to rejoice When in service for my Lord, dark may be the night But I'll cling 
more close to him, he will give me life. Satan's snares may vex my soul, turn my thoughts aside. But my Lord goes ahead, leads where be tied. Oh, I want to see him look upon his face. There to sing forever of his saving grace. On the streets of glory, let me lift my voice. Here it's all past, home at last, ever to rejoice. When in valley slow I look toward the mountainside, and behold my Savior there, leading in the fight, with a tender hand outstretched toward the valley low. Guiding me, I can see as I onward go. Oh, I want to see him look upon his face. There to sing forever of his saving grace. On the streets of glory, let me lift my voice. Here is all past, home at last, ever to rejoice. May billows rise from the mighty Then my Lord directs my bark He does safely keep And he leads me gently on Through this world below He's a real friend to me Oh, I love him so Oh, I want to see him Look upon his face There to sing forever of his saving grace on the streets of glory let me lift my voice there is all past home at last ever to rejoice two oh we shall see the king Two or three hundred. Two thirty. Three hundred. Sing loud. <laughs> Everybody sing. <laughs> There's a. There's a blessed time that's coming, coming soon. It may be evening, morning, or at noon. The wedding of the bride, united with the groom. We shall see the king when he comes. We shall see the king. We shall see the king. We shall see the king when he comes. He is coming in power to help bless it out. We shall see the King when He comes. Are you ready should the Savior call today? Would Jesus say, well done, or go away? My home is for the pure, the vile can never stay. We shall see the King when He comes. We shall see the king, we shall see the king, we shall see the king when he comes. He is coming in power to hail the blessed hour. We shall see the king when he comes. Oh, my brother, are you ready for the call to crown your Savior, King and Lord of all? The kingdoms of this world shall soon before him fall. We shall see the king when he comes. We shall see the king. We shall see the king. We shall see the king when he comes. He is coming in power to hail the blessed hour. We shall see the king.
We all go through storms. But you know what? When we ride them out, God's going to help us. He's going to be right there and help us. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Life is a few days of trouble. A wise man once said, that's not track three, I'm sorry. <laughs> that's a different one. I knew that, and that one messes up, though. I'm sorry, y'all. But this one is right out your storm. <laughs> It'd be track three. Thank you, Jesus. It's going to work out. Praise God, huh? <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. <clears throat> there it is. Yay, man. Thank you. <laughs> Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You've been in this storm and it seems like forever and your night of confusion has been oh so long your ship has lost anchor and the storm's got you drifting but the night's almost over so ride out your storm ride out your storm god's right there with you you may not feel him oh but you're not alone you're hurting now but your morning is coming just hold on to jesus ride out your storm thank you jesus thank you jesus thank you father god <laughs> hallelujah thank you jesus <laughs> thank you jesus <laughs> he has several whole whole bunch of promises <clears throat> thank you jesus remember his promise he said i'll never forsake you though the waters are raging oh they'll do you no harm don't give up the battle for your answer is coming just hold on to jesus Ride out your storm. Ride out your storm. God's right there with you. <laughs> you may not feel him. Oh, but you're not alone. You're hurting now. The morning is coming. Just hold on to Jesus. Ride out your storm. He's right there with you. Ride out your storm. He'll never leave you. Ride out your storm. Thank you, Jesus. Boy, if we just 
Fight out our storm. We're going to make it. <laughs> Just hang on to Jesus. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. You know what? We all go through storms. We need that advice. Write it out. Amen. The Bible tells us that God said, I am never going to leave you. I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I'll always be right there. You know what? He even gave us another word. He says, I can do all things through Christ to strengthen. Amen. That was for us. That's for you and me. Amen? Amen? That when these things come, we can say, oh, you know what? I'm more than a conqueror. I can do it. Just put your name in there. When it says, uh, uh, things, just like in John 3, 16, for God so loved me that he gave his only begotten son to whosoever. I'm that whosoever. That believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Amen? Put your name in the words of those, those scriptures yes. because God was giving them to you. Yes. Amen? Amen. You, you want proof that he was? Check you. out uh, Jeremiah 29, 11. For I have a plan for you. Hallelujah. That's God speaking to each and every one. The one reason. He's speaking to you. Whoo! Glory to God. Hallelujah. I'm just yes. doing a little dance. Amen. Yeah. Praise God. <laughs> Woo! I'll tell you, Harry stands to you. You got a song, brother? Yeah, I'm trying to keep my mouth <laughs> You wore a long sleeve shirt to hide him, didn't you? Thank you, Jesus. I don't know where we're going with this, but we're going to find out. We'll get there. I'm sorry. My my new teeth aren't acting right. Oh. Mine is supposed to fly. <laughs> Mine's trying to. <laughs> He touched me. 
Oh, he touched me. And oh, the joy that floods my soul. Something happened. What happened? Something happened. And now I know he touched me and made me whole. Thank you, Jesus. No, I was sitting there, and brother, that's the song that I told Trish. I said, I don't know if I'm supposed to sing that one or this one. And she said, just ask God. And so I said, God, what one do I sing? You know, you know me, I don't do much singing. But I, when I feel it, I got to do it. Amen. 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 Oh. Oh, Lord, my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds thy hands have made, I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, Thy power throughout the universe display. Then sinks my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art. When through the woods and forest glades I wander, and hear the birds sing sweetly in the trees. When I look down from lofty mountains grander, and hear the brook and feel the gentle breeze. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. And when I think that God, his son not sparing, sent him to die, I scarce can take it in. That on the cross, my burden gladly bearing, he bled and died to take away my sin. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art, then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Cry 
shall come with shouts of acclamation and take me home. What joy shall fill my heart. Then I shall bow in humble adoration and there proclaim my God how great thou art then sings my soul my Savior God to thee how great thou art how great thou art, then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Amen. Praise God. Woo, glory. Well, Brother Tom, are you about ready? Thank you for doing that. Well, did you know that not a one of you are here tonight by chance? You're here because God directed you this way. Before we get into the message, and it won't be a long message, and uh, when I get through with it, I hope you don't get up in the parking lot and beat me up, <laughs> because there's a chance I may step on some toes tonight, but if I do, I do not apologize, because it's what the Lord has given me. Some of you, most of you heard me give the word before. And I'm not hesitant to put it just the way the scripture says. Amen. So many times this day and age, so many preachers and pastors try to flower up the scriptures so that they won't hurt anybody's feelings. Amen. Well, sometimes, guess what? We need our feelings hurt. We need to be shook up. Sometimes we need to be shook up to shut up. Amen. That's pretty harsh, but I'm telling you the way it is. Well, let us pray right now. Father God, I stand before you. Nothing more than just a dirt bag. But God, you can use me, and here I, here I am. Here I am, God. Use me. Speak through me. I am your vessel. Pour into me what you would have me pour out. Father, I ask blessings upon each and every one that's here tonight. And Father, we give praise unto you. We thank you for that blessed son, that blessed one. Thank you for Jesus, our Savior. Thank you, Father. Amen. Well, Brother Sonny used one of my scriptures a while ago. But I'm going to use it again, brother. It's going to be a little bit different twist than most people put on this. But you just bear with me. John 3, 16 and 17. For God so loved the world. And I'm going to stop there for just a moment. 
Would you let that soak in just for a minute? For God so loved the world. What's the key word there? Love. God loves us. So loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever shall believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. When I read 316, I don't want to leave out 17. Because listen, listen to this. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Amen. Through him might be saved. Amen. Now, if you want to follow me, you can go over to Romans 8. I mean, I'm sorry. Roman, yeah, I'm, that's right. I'm an old man, so I'm going to make some mistakes. Just bear with me. Romans 8, chapter 14, or verse 14, rather. We're in chapter 8, verse 14. If you're following me in the Bible, I want to give you just a moment to find it. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. And let me interject here. That should read the sons and daughters. But when it was interpreted from Greek, they put sons. But it's sons and daughters. Amen. Let's read that first line there. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons, and if you'll allow me, and daughters of God. For you have not received the spirit of bondage, again, to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Amen. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are, wait a minute, listen to this. Now, this is really important. We are the children of God. John 3.16 stated that love, he loved us. Amen. And now we're reading that we are his children. Amen. Come on. Now bear with me. We're, we're not done. We're just, we're, just, we're getting there. Like I said, this is short, but Philippians. Chapter 2, we'll drop in on verse 5. When you get there, say amen. amen. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men, and being found in a fashion as a man, he humbled. Verse 8, I really want you to home in on verse 8. Listen to this. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient. And this is where I'm going with all of this. Obedient unto death, even death on the cross. Do we not accept the fact that when Jesus Christ walked on the face of this earth, he set an example for us to live by? He didn't. When he encountered the sinners, he didn't push them away. If you remember right in the scriptures, he even went and supped with them. Some of the higher-ups of the Jewish, they thought that was horrible. Why would such a man sit down and eat with such sinners? How would you like it to have been authorized from church and when you was a sinner and you decided to come to church and they met you at the door and said, no, no, you're not coming in here. Because you're a sinner. This is where sinners need to come. Amen. 
There's not a one of you in here. Not a one of you at one time did not commit sin. I stand before you as a witness. I was probably the biggest sinner of all that's in this building. I mean, one or two of you think you come pretty close to me, but I'm not sure about that. So we talked about love. God loved us. We talked about about obedience and about being his children. Those of you that have children, and as I look out over the crowd, most of you, I'm sure your children are probably, most of them are grown, moved on. But when your children, when they were little, and they did things that was not right, and they had to be corrected, because they wasn't obedient, and you had to spank them. Sometimes, yeah, had to spank them. Do you not think not that God sometimes spanks us? He spanks us spiritually, but trust me, he loves us. Why does, why does he, because he loves us. Because we've been disobedient. If there's any of you here tonight that can stand up and say, I have not been disobedient, do so now. My, my. Nobody stood up. Why? Because we're flesh. We walk in the flesh. We fight the flesh every day. Every day. And at times we are disobedient. But God loves us so, so, so much. Sometimes we get a spiritual spanking to get us back on the narrow track. Years ago, when I was in the workforce, I worked in manufacturing, and uh, I was an inspector. I inspected vessels and different things that were built, units. And these units, most all of them were built under a code. Every one of them had a code that you had, to, you had to go by that code that they were built by. And in these codes, when you read them, it would say, thou shall. You shall do such and such, or you shall not do such and such. Well, let's consider the Ten Commandments. What does each commandment start with? Thou shalt not. Thou shalt not. And it just goes on. Ten times. Thou shalt not. Did you know that when you write up a contract and you're building a vessel and they, they state what codes is to be done, that that's a legal document, and if you have to go to, into a court of law, the first thing they're going to do is say, look here, wait a minute. It said right here. Thou shall do, but you didn't. Now you're guilty. Now you're guilty. And you're probably thinking to yourself, as you sit there, say, well, Brother Tom, I, uh, I, 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 I stay right with the Ten Commandments. Oh, do you? Do you really? No, I know. I know none of you are out stealing and you're not killing. I understand that. What about keeping the Sabbath? It says, thou shalt keep the Sabbath. Hmm? Do you know how many? And I don't know exact number, but it went up in the millions last Sunday night. Didn't go to church. You say, why? Why, brother? Oh, there was a big football game. Oh. What's wrong with that picture? I'm sure some of them sitting there in front of that TV last Sunday night said, I'm a Christian. I'm a child of God. 
Yeah, I'm, I'm not disputing that. But I'm saying this. You broke one of the thou shall nots. If he didn't want you to be present on the Sabbath, he wouldn't have wrote it in such a manner or had it written. What about that thou shall not bear false witness? Now that can encompass, if you'll allow me, that can encompass a lot of things. That can encompass telling a little fib on someone or about something. Hmm? Yeah. Yeah, it can. But <laughs> I'm sure none of you, none of you would ever, ever do such a thing. Why? Because we're Christians. Really? Really? We, I, must daily, daily examine ourselves. Every day. If you're going to walk the walk, and I've said this many times, and I'll continue to say it until they throw dirt in my face. If you're going to walk the walk, you're going to talk the talk, then go back and walk the walk. Right? They go hand in hand. And I want to say this to you. You and more than likely, some of you, maybe not all of you, are going to be the only Bible that some people ever read. You think, well, Tom, that's quite a statement. What, what do you mean? Because of the way you live your life and the way you conduct yourself and the way you interact with others. If an individual comes up to you and they're ragged and dirty and filthy and tell you're hungry, do you look at them and just walk away? I hope not. I hope you reach out. And I hope you reach out in love and kindness to that individual. Some of them, I will say this, and I'll be, I, want, I just want reality. Some of them have put themselves in that situation because that's where they want to be. But there's a lot of them. Circumstances dealt them a bad, bad, bad card. And who are we to judge? Who are we to judge? I judge no one. There's at times I see people, and I've had people make comments to me and say, well, what do you think about that so-and-so? And we'll just grab a name. What do you think about old Bill? You know what I usually say? Well, they sure are different. They're different. But you know what? I was different. Only through... Only through the grace of God and him having the Holy Spirit move on my heart that I yield to Jesus Christ to become my Savior. Amen. Now, I can stand before you and tell you, I never did kill anybody. There's once or twice I come real close. I'm, no, I'm serious. I come real close. Thank God I didn't, it didn't happen. Amen. But it wasn't because I wasn't trying. I want to share this with you. I've never told this. There was a young man. We were probably around 14, 15 years old. I don't exactly remember his exact age. He stayed all night with me. And during the night, he showed out. And I strangled him. I really did. I strangled him. I thought he was dead. And there was no, do you know, any of you know about pump houses? Up. Way back off, away from the house, there's no pump house. I grabbed him, I drug him out there, and, and I went on back in the house and went to sleep. Well, I got up the next morning, I thought, well, what do they usually do when somebody, well, they dig a hole. Maybe I ought to go out there and dig a hole. He wasn't there. He was not there. And I've seen him about three days later. And when I've seen him, he turned and went the other way. And I don't blame him. 
I mean, after all, I tried to kill him. So I see what I'm saying? The point I'm trying to make is where God brought me from. And I'm sure that he, each and one of you have a testimony where he brought you from. Amen. But I want to say this. Him having brought you from that. Don't get holier than thou. Do you follow me? Too many times we get all holy on people. And if you want to push somebody away real quick, pull that I'm holier than thou card, and I guarantee you they will turn and run. I had an old preacher friend and he used to go on visitation. And we'd come time and we'd usually go on a Tuesday night and he would look around and they sometimes they'd be with me as twenty or twenty five of us to go on visitation. He'd say, uh, I want I want Tom to go with me. Oh man, I'm probably the vilest person in here. Why would the preacher pick on me? So I asked him, I said, JC, why do you always ask for me to go with you? He said, well, I'm going to tell you, Brother Tom, it's like this. And we were out on the Sand Springs line, up and down the line, doing visitation. And this gentleman right over here will testify, that used to be a pretty rough place. I guess it still is, I, I'm not sure. He said, Brother Tom, there's not a one of them dives out there and up down that line you haven't been on. And you know all those folks. A lot of them live around here. And said, when we walk in and go through their gate and go up on the porch and knock, and they see you, they'll say, where well, there's old Tom. Just come on in, Tom. And he said, then I get to walk in behind you. And he said, then I get to share the word. I said, JC, I never thought of it like that. He said, God uses us all in mysterious ways. Amen. But having said that, do you not realize you got to let him. Let him lead. Amen. Too many times we jump out there and want to run ahead of him. There was a song back in, the, I think in the late 50s, could have been in the early 60s. I think it was in the 50s. The Great Pretender. I pray to God that none of you are trying to be a great pretender. That you're sincere. And you're in your walk with Jesus, that you're truly sincere. Because you see, there's coming a day. And we live in such a time and some people say, boy, I, I wish I wouldn't. No, I, I thank God that I'm in this time. I'm getting to see what the scripture, it's being fulfilled right before my eyes and on a daily basis. I'm seeing it. God is on the throne and he's going to send Jesus back any time. It could happen any moment in the twinkling of the eye. Isn't that what the scripture says? We're out of here. And we live in that time. We're living right now. So don't be a pretender. Each and every one of us will stand before the great white throne of judgment. Not a one of us will escape that. You say, but I'm a Christian. Yeah, you're a Christian. We're all going to stand there. We're all going to go through. And there's going to be either one or the other said. The first one's going to be said, I knew you not. And you're full of all the crying and the wailing, but, but Lord, I cast out devils in your name. I don't know you. Have you ever contemplated on that scripture? What's he talking about? The great pretenders. Don't ever kid yourself. God can use a great pretender. You say, what? Yes, he can. God, 
all things are possible with God. But the thing of it is, don't put your faith in man. Too many times and over the years in my lifetime, I've seen people, and I will tell you right up, and I'll tell this man right to his face, I love you, Brother Sonny. But after all, when it's all said and done, you put your pants on the same way I do. Absolutely. Amen. I love him. But I don't put my faith in him. No, my faith is in God. Amen. So many, many times I've seen churches split wide open, disbanded because of the fact, well, our preacher's leaving, and uh, I think I'll just go with him. And, oh, yeah. Yeah, and I won't go any further with that, but I'm sure it'll, if you haven't experienced it, you've seen it or heard about it. I want to be one of those when I'm standing at the great white throne that he looks at me. Well done, my true and faithful servant, Henry. And then he turns to the father and says, Dad, that was one of mine that just came in. That was one of mine. Question I have for each and every one of you. Are you one of his tonight? I said, well, I'm here in church, aren't I? Yes, you are. But there's been people who went to church all their life and died and went to hell. Now, like I said, that's, that's kind of harsh, isn't it? But it's true. There are people that went to church all their life and did not accept Jesus as their personal Savior. Outwardly, they may have said it, but I'm talking about in your heart, in your soul, in your mind. Heart, soul, and mind, accept Jesus as your personal Savior. Many times, Pastor Sonny will say, don't pray with just your mouth. Pray with your heart. Mean it. Well, when you walk the walk and you're walking with Jesus, you need to do it with your mind, your heart, and your soul. In other words, you need to sell out. You see, when I first become a Christian, I really didn't I really didn't catch that. I'd heard it. I was raised in a Christian home. I'd heard that. But one day the Lord as if he just reached out and went, I gotta do this. Whop and got my attention. Amen. Sometimes that's what it takes. So I ask you this in closing. I told you it wouldn't be long. Before I do that, I want to say this. You probably, some of you have heard me preach before, and you say, you're always preaching about doing right and doing right. You know why? Because I love you, and I, when I get to heaven, and there's that old song, I want to stroll over heaven with you someday. I want to be strolling with each and every one of you. And when I give you what God has laid on my heart, it's because I love you, He loves you, and I'm letting speak, I'm letting God speak through me. Because I don't want one of you, not one of you, to miss out on that glorious time that we're going to have in heaven. Live your life for Jesus. So that when, and it is coming, how many of you, and I dare say probably all of you, have lost a friend, relative, or someone you knew just recently? We have no guarantee. There's no guarantee that any of you are going to make it home tonight. There's no guarantee that you'll... Stand up and walk out that door tonight. You could fall dead right here. Or or well, this is I don't need that. I'm I'm loud enough and ugly enough. I think you can all hear me anyway.
secretion from our loved ones, our patients. So, and I know Brother Sonny has to. Amen. If anything tonight that you've gotten out of this sermon, the sermon is that I want each and every one of you, when you stand before that great white throne, I want you to hear Jesus' voice say, Well done, my faithful and true servant. Amen. Love you guys. God bless you. Brother Sonny. Not a good word. That was a good word. As he started out in Romans 8, I, I was reading, and uh, I don't know about you, but sometimes I put little footnotes in my scriptures. Uh, it looks like I've almost rewrote the Bible. But, but in verse 17, uh, Tom read, and it says, uh, well, verse 15, rather. It says, For ye have not received the Spirit, of bondage again to fear and I wrote in mine for I for I have not received and as we make this word personal as God is writing to each and every one of us it's a little love letter to help us and he talks about obedience that's out of love if you've seen a child in danger of being hurt or, or, or killed or what you, you, you sure as a world going to try to stop that. And, and sometimes it takes a little bit of handwork. You know what I mean? But the Bible says that God loves you and he chastises. That means he corrects those that he loves. And it's out of our obedience. He says obedience is better than sacrifice. So as we are obedient to the word of God, things are so much easier and so much better just following after his guidelines. And how can you follow after them if you're not obedient to them? Amen? It means you're trying to do it your way, not his way. But as I read that, and, and, it, and it went on to say, uh, but you have received the spirit of adoption. Don't you love that word, adoption? When God's speaking it to you, because you didn't just born into it. God loved you so much he adopted you in. You were chosen. God didn't, you didn't just come about by being born into that family. You were chosen to be a part of that family. Uh, Tom started out with there ain't a single person here by chance. You wasn't. You were, you were meant to be here tonight to hear this message, to hear this word. You know, we're talking about revival. Well, you know what? You build your foundation. Foundations is where it starts. And we build a part of our foundation tonight with this word. And we can grow from there with a good foundation. If your foundation's got cracks in it or weak, it's just, it's just not going to last. It's going to be weak. It's going to be give out. We need a good, firm foundation, and that foundation is being built tonight in this Word to help us with obedience is the first start of it. Amen? First start of a good foundation with God. Oh, yes. Amen. Tom, that was a good word. I appreciate you being obedient to allow God to use you on it. It's not easy to tell people. You know, some. Because nobody wants to, everybody wants to think they're just right. But you know what? We're not always, the Bible says we all come short of the glory of God. Think about that. Yeah. Amen. It says, well, while we were yet sinners, Jesus died for us. I Meaning we wasn't all that holy. We wasn't all that great. But Jesus came and died for us. Amen. We needed him. Some people think they don't need anybody. Oh, you got a second thought coming because I'm going to tell you what. You need him. But Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father but by me. 
The Bible tells us that we are to seek him first, that he'll add these things. We're always wanting these things, but the Bible says seek him first and he'll add these things unto us. It seems like we're so busy trying to get these things that we forget that we're supposed to seek him. We let the cares of the world distract us and get us out over here in left field. You know, I, I'm a sports nut too, brother. The movie we watched last night was called Running the Bases. It's about baseball. I could, I could just associate with that so much because I played ball all my life. My kids were raised up at a ball field watching me play. And then I got too old and I watched them play. Amen? So ball fields was just our second home for years. My little girl, my daughter, my youngest, said she didn't know anything besides ball field growing up. You know, but I could watch and associate with that, that movie last night. And I know when he said, baseball was my life. It was my life for a long time, wasn't it, Trish? I was a catcher. He was a catcher. I thought, boy, is this film trying to talk to me? Is it trying to tell me something? For years, I was a catcher. And I loved that ball. I loved to, to run those bags. I loved to play. I loved to throw that ball. I loved the, the competition in it. Oh. But you know what? We, I love the Lord. That, that love that I had for that game, I had transferred from that game to my Lord, my Savior, the one that loved me enough to die for me. Let me tell you, there's not a ball player in this world right now who would die for you. He don't even know who you are. Even if he got to know you, you'd still be a stranger to him. Amen? But you know what? They can inspire. They can. These ball players, uh, I can't think of his name now, that played for the New York Jets. That him and one of his teammates run into together. He was from Tulsa. You remember his name? And it broke his, yeah. broke his back. And they said he would never walk again. I got to know him. Then. And he told me, he said, they said that. But I'm going to walk again. And by golly, he did. The last time I seen him, he was walking with a cane. And he said, this cane ain't going to stay with me either. And after seeing him do all that, I knew the cane wasn't. Amen? He said, I, I got a Savior that has given me a different diagnosis than what the doctors gave me. Man, I think, Bird. Dennis. Dennis, Dennis, Bird. Dennis Bird. Played for the New York Giants. I mean, uh, Jets. Yeah, defensive end. Big guy. He was a nice guy, too, let me tell you. I, I really like Dennis. He's gone now. He, but he wasn't in fact that killed him. He died in a car wreck. Amen? He was a nice guy, let me tell you. I love Dennis. Let me tell you what. My God is my Savior as well as yours. Why couldn't we be obedient to him? The one that loved us enough to die for us. Why can't we be obedient to him? Amen? Listen, if there's anybody tonight, and I don't, I don't want to hear this old thing, I've been going to church all my life. I know I haven't. I was 50 years old. <laughs> I, so I can't say that. But I hear it from others. I've been going to church. That don't make you saved. Unless you've opened up your heart and said, Lord, I accept you. I believe in you. I believe that you came. You love me enough that you came to this earth and that you died for me. And that God raised you from the dead for my sake. Unless you can honestly open yourself up to him. Listen, hell's going to be overcrowded. And like Tom said, there will be a lot of church people there. I hate it. I sh shame on it. But it's the truth. And the truth is what sets you free. Who are you seeking first? Are you seeking the worldly things? 
TV program and like I was sports, fishing maybe. What are you seeking first? If you're not seeking Jesus first, then listen, hell's got its arms wide open. But you ain't going to like it. Amen? If there's anybody tonight that, hey, and it's easy to let, get off course a little bit. It's easy. The devil, people think the devil is, oh, boy, you just know when he's there. No, he's subtle. Little things. You know, I've heard one beer. What's one beer going to hurt? Let me tell you what. One beer leads to two. Did you know that the alcoholic started out with one beer? Did you know the drug, uh, the dope heads started with maybe just a marijuana cigarette? Just one. What's, what's that little cigarette going to hurt? But it started with one. Did you know the longest trip ever made started with one step? The trip to the moon that they took started with one step. Listen, one step leads to two. One sin leads to another. And the devil's subtle about it. What's one beer going to hurt? Oh, and i tell you what, I've been tempted on a hot day. I used to love that stuff. On a hot day and sweat pouring down and look at a can of beer and there's Water just dripping off that cold. Oh, Lord. Oh. But you know what? That one leads to two. Amen. If, you know what? If you're not sure of your salvation, let's make sure tonight, right here at this altar. I'll pray with you because let me tell you, I, I daily have to pray for my salvation. Daily. Because I don't want to miss heaven. I have to seek him first and let these other things fall in place. That's a fact. If that's your case and you've gotten off course, let me pray with you. Because I'll tell you what, I'll be praying for myself and you can pray for me too as we pray. If not, let's close this out with prayer. I'm looking forward to Friday night. Amen. Some good gospel singing. Maybe some good dance songs. Huh? I like to dance. Amen. You know, I used to dance for the devil. Oh, every Friday, Saturday night, we was some bar or boogie woogie. So Papa has a VFW over there. That I hit an old boy over the head with a whiskey bottle one time, and he he went down like a like he was shot. I was scared. I killed him. I watched the paper for a week see if there was. A, Somebody got killed at the BFW because I knew who did it. Uh, yeah, we need to pray for Donna. Avon's daughter, she's having surgery tomorrow. A cancer surgery. Amen. I hate that stinking cancer. I do. I hate that stinking stuff. You know what? That's not of God. It is not a God. So we're going to bind it. Yeah. I don't know how big they are now. They have so many x-rays. Right. Well, you know what? We prayed for a man that had surgery Monday. And they said he had a tumor the size of a, a soccer ball in his stomach. Yeah. You remember me telling you guys? We all prayed. Well, guess what? They went in, and they said, that thing wasn't near as big as we thought it was. We didn't. It just... We just took that right out, and it wasn't no big deal. That's what he told me. He said, man, it was no big deal. Listen, the same God that took care of that, he'll take care of Donna. Amen? He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen? You're going to be a point of contact? Yes. Come on up here, Trish. Yes. Yes. Amen. Why, sure. We'll pray for him too. Amen. You know, it's, it's, it's hard. Yes. She's a baby. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Amen. Can, she does, so. Amen. Get on over here, sis, and grab hold of her.
Yes. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we just come right now. God, as this point of contact, this mother stands in the gap for her daughter, God. God, we ask for your healing touch, God. For God, you said if we'd call, God, that you would answer. And that, God, that you would show us great and mighty things, God. God, we're asking God for a healing. Show us. Show us, God. God, take away these, oh, we come against that cancer. We rebuke that cancer. In the name of Jesus, we speak healing to this body. God, we know that we know that we know that, God, there ain't nothing impossible for you, nothing that you can't do. God, that your word is true. Your promises are yea and amen. And, God, we stand on those promises. God, we stand on your word, God. God, we declare her healed in the name of Jesus. We rebuke that cancer. Yes, Father. In the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Woo! Thank you, Lord. Yes. You just continue to thank him because he is healing her body. Oh, yes. Amen, girl. My God is able. My God is able. Woo! Thank you, Jesus. Don't limit him. He's able to do it exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or we think. Amen. Don't limit him. Amen. Just give him praise. Just give him praise. The Bible says God inhabits the praise of his people. God, we praise you tonight for this healing. God, we give you all the praise, God. God, we lift you up, God. We thank you, Father, that you're always available. We don't have to go in search of you. You're always right there. That, God, that you hear our prayers, you answer our prayers. God, show these doctors, show these people around, God, these, these people that have that negative thought, God. God, just show them that a positive thought is so powerful that it can take away cancer even. Father, you healed me of cancer. I was diagnosed with it, God. God, that, that doctor went in and couldn't find a trace, God. God, let these doctors have the same experience. And God, we'll give you praise. We'll give you glory. Father, as we close out this service, God, God, we ask that you go home with us. God, that you keep us safe, God. That, God, that we don't leave you here in this house, in this building. But, God, that we, we take you everywhere we go. That, God, your light shines through us, God. That, God, we can be that light on this dark world, God. That people will see us and say, hey, you've been in his presence. I feel his, I just feel that anointing on you. Father, we know that we know that we know that, God, we are your vessels, God. Let us be your witnesses here on earth. In Jesus' name. And everybody will say, Amen. Amen.